Hello again, uh, this is Mike, and today I am going to be working not on the Fox Spider or Coop stuff. I'm going to be putting a traction lock differential in a 8-inch uh, third member. So I'll bring you in and show you what we got to work with. This is a 8-inch uh, third member from a 1977 Mustang II Cobra II. So <clears throat> building this up for a friend. And what we're doing is we're getting rid of the open differential and we're sticking a traction lock in it. And it's as simple as it gets, but the only hard part is I'm probably going to have to record this in a different segment because I'm going to have to get in or I want to get in and just re replace the, uh, the pinion seal while I'm here. It requires a bunch of disassembly and retorquing and stuff. But uh, that aside the point, we're going to get in here and literally just change this diff. Hopefully I'm going to take these bearings off. Press the bearings onto this, drop it back in, recenter it up, set the backlash, and uh, call it good. I mean, that's as easy as it gets, and you can do it right here on the bench with this type of rear end. So, uh, I'm gonna have to make a special tool. I used to have, I made one in the past. I gave it to a friend before I left the States, thinking I wasn't gonna use one again. Next time I use one or need one, I'd have to make it. But uh, for tightening up these end caps, with these rings, this is as good as of a steel rod that I have, and I'm going to weld two bolts to it so that they will go into these holes, and then I will be able to use this to loosen or tighten uh, these end caps. So, but something you can make yourself. I'm sure they, you, there's something out there you can buy, but I'm just gonna weld one up. All right, just like that, there's some uh, two bolts. Well, they do just a steel rod. This is, <laughs> this is just an old T5 uh, reverse fifth shaft that the, the stud was out of. So it was in the junk box. So that's what I use. So this is just going to go in these little holes here. And we'll use that. Oh, this one's already loose. <laughs> well, we're going to need this anyway, because these should have some bit of preload on them when it all goes back together. But uh, yeah, I'll give, throw you up a time lapse and uh, show me blowing this thing apart. Got it all apart. Gonna be changing the pinion seal, but looking at this thing, it's got a couple of good sized pits in the bearing race. I've even gotten to the smaller forward bearing yet to take a look at that one. So I'm thinking this needs a couple bearings, but I was hoping to get away with using a crush collar and nut from an 8.8, because .8, I have a whole box, I got four of them hanging around, but they're a little bit too big a diameter for an eight inch pinion, the shaft diameter here. So I got plenty of nuts. So I got a nut, but I need to get crush washer and I need to get some bearings and it'll be a few weeks before you, you know, for me, but in this scene, you'll see me starting to do some more work on this thing. diff project so we finally got our bearings in ordered them from rock auto and they came reasonably quick and the main problem why this project stalled was because we have an aftermarket traction lock differential here and the original eight inch bearings will not fit on the here is these are nine inch carrier bearings on an eight inch diff so 
We had to order uh, set number 47 on a Timken bearing. And I'm gonna try to install this one. I got the one on the underside already in there. It comes with the race and the bearing. So the races from new and old are on the outside diameter are exactly the same. It's just the inside diameter is bigger to fit a nine inch carrier. So that's what we're gonna go with. Get a big hunk of steel down there, plate of steel here. And I'll try to edit out the sound. Alright, there we go. Well, this diff is ready for the housing. We just got to prepare the rest of the housing yet. So, I pressed or tapped the bearing, races in, set it all up, and what I got here is instead of a crush collar, what it is is a solid spacer and it's got these different shims. And all you do is you put it together, and when it's torqued down, then you turn it and measure your. Uh, your turning torque. So I'll be using this in a minute to uh, check the printing preload, but I pretty much have a good feel for it. I'll just verify it anyway. But uh, so you put it together, take it apart to get the right preload, and then you do it without a seal in it, so you don't mess up your seal. And then when you got your, you know what you need, then you put the seal in. Then you put it together one last time with a brand new nut, because the new nut will have some kind of a uh, goo on it to seal so it'll stop the oil from coming through the, the threads of the nut and then this thing will all be set up and done and ready to be put into the uh the center section so i'll do that now and i'll bring you back in just a minute All right, I've been fiddling with this thing, trying to get it together for about 20, 30 minutes. Finally found the problem. So uh, <laughs> I'm gonna have to take it all back apart because the housing is too big to fit right here. So it's actually touching where the pinion support area is. So I'm gonna have to get in here and grind a little bit of this housing away just so this thing can fit all the way down and not be rubbing. So, uh, one more thing about these aftermarket housings that they don't tell you. <laughs> Bearings and clearances. So, I mean, everywhere else looks good. So, I just got to clearance that one little area. So. Alright, so what I had to do is I taped up this whole, uh, taped up the whole differential so I didn't get any uh, metal shavings down in the bearings or the gears. And I ground off this little area <clears throat> here on the pinion support. Now we're all back together. I got the caps aligned and torqued down. I have a 35 thousandths feeler shim here, so you know, there's plenty of clearance in between the what I ground off and the differential housing. And my dial indicator set up. I got the caps torqued to 75 foot pounds. I think the range is like 70 to 85. So it's just real hard to get torque on these things while you're sitting here on the bench. So, but I got it up to 75, happy about that. It should be perfectly fine. So with the dial indicator here set up, I don't know if you can see without the glare, but I have almost exactly 10 thou of, of backlash clearance. I think the spec is eight to 12. So we're right smack in the middle. Next thing I gotta do is just put these things in here lock it down I'm gonna take my little my tool 
and just give it a little bit of preload on each side just for a uh, good measure because when I took this thing apart it was pretty darn loose so uh, you give it some preload make sure we're still inspecting the backlash lock it down and this thing is done so uh, yeah I'll call my buddy up in a bit let him know his differential is ready so uh, yeah, there's just more stuff I'm playing with here on the bench on the weekend so I'll catch you guys soon in another video